Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thanks for joining me today for part two of our Created Door Cup File and Pattern Bundle series. This is the second of four videos that I am releasing to go into more depth on how to use and create with the Cup File Bundle. Now, I have previously released three videos regarding this bundle, and I will have a playlist in the description box below for you. In today's video, you'll learn how to create interactive gatefold doors, a hidden pocket, and how to turn your door front into a standard greeting card. So let's get started. For today's project, I'll be using the Create a Door Cut File and Pattern Mega Bundle, which includes the standard Create a Door Bundle and the Windows and Door Decor SVG add-on kit. For the next type of card that you can make with this Cut File Bundle, You'll have a door base that has the header as well as stairs at the bottom. You'll also receive the tent card back with the header and stairs to match. So if you wanted to make this into a tent card, you could do that as well. And just like our first card, you would be able to cut the side card panel Fold that, add it to the back if you wanted to create a card that opened to the side. Or as I mentioned, using it in your journal and mini albums. So again, I just want to reiterate that any of the files that you see in this bundle, they can be interchangeable. And I mean that in respect to the card bases that you select, the one with just the header or the one with the header and stairs. All the other elements, coordinate with each of them. So for this card design, we're going to create a side open card, just like a regular greeting card. Down at the bottom are our stairs and the image looks like this. You'll see that it has one score line down the center. When uploaded to your software machine, ungroup, change that line to be a score line, attach those two images, and then you're ready to cut it out. Add adhesive to the back side, and then attach it to the bottom. And of course, the cutouts will match. Make sure it's flush to the bottom, but not going over. And then just burnish that down. And there's our stairs. Now some of these pieces are going to repeat, so you're going to get familiar with them. So I'm going to add our side decorative strip, and I'm going to start on the left-hand side. Again, just starting at the bottom, so it should line up with the top of our stairs. Nothing overlaps here, just right at the top of our stairs. Add that all the way down. And repeat that on the other side. Next, I'll add the header. Again, once I uploaded this to my software machine, I ungrouped, changed the inner lines to be deboss, but again, you can use score, attached all the lines together, and then cut it out. I'm going to add my little decorative pieces, and really all these are just color accents. I did ink the edges for this particular project. Now for this card, we added our door panels, creating a gatefold door that was flat. For this design, I created a gatefold panel that can be inserted here so that the doors actually open. So this gatefold panel can be glued down all the way to be flat onto the card base. Or what I thought about, you can add this by adding adhesive on three sides. And it would actually make a secretive pocket. Now, it may be a little difficult to get in there at first, but if it's secretive, you don't really want it to be accessible to everyone, right? 
So there's where your little pocket would be. So this piece is the gatefold door panel. Now for my design, what I ended up doing was using the Halloween collection by Cartabella. I have this digitally as well. So I printed out this paper design on the front and the back. I even added one of the elements from the collection right onto my pattern paper before I printed it. I love how that looks. I love that that's what you're going to see when you open it up. So before I actually glue this down, I wanted to recap about the front of our gatefold door. Just like with the first design, we can use the door inset panel to be added to the front. And when you do that, you want to add it by gluing it all the way to the edge of the gatefold panel. So I would decorate the fronts of your door first before adhering it down. It'll just be a little bit easier. So you would add your adhesive to the back and glue it on by putting it all the way to the edge. Because remember, we take our little center deco strips and add that later. So this was the door inset panel. This is the one that had that extra piece and I wanted to just show this to you. So that's how it looks before you cut it out and then after you cut it out, you have this little piece here that can come off and give you this great design. So I would hang on to these pieces because they can actually be guides for when we go to glue down the center piece. Just lay it in there, don't glue it down, and then glue down your little inset piece and then remove this piece and it will be perfectly aligned, okay? So we have that option. Again, you can use the door panel with the three cutouts. This is the one that has these smaller cutouts. You don't have this extra piece. And you could just put in some color blocking there, which would be really nice as well. Or you can just add another pattern or solid color here for the door front, whatever you like. And then you would add your center strips. Once you figure out what you want your panels here to be, then you add your center strips. When we open the doors, this panel is a little bit wider and that's because we added the center strips on the front. So I made the actual door panel for the decoration a little bit smaller. So on the inside, you have another piece and this is called the deco panel for inside the gatefold doors. And it is the perfect size to be glued down, but leave enough space where the score line is so that everything closes without any issue. So the deco panel for inside of the gatefold doors would fit on both of the insides. Now, technically you can use the same piece to the front side of the doors as well. If you did, you would then add your layers on top and it would just build this out a little bit more and give you more of a layered look. So it all depends on how you want to use the pieces that are provided in the cut file bundle. But I did want to point those out. Now that I've kind of gone through the panels and how you can decorate them with the additional pieces that are provided in the cut file bundle, I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down on three sides. So if I want a secretive pocket, I will have that available to me. This is just an option. You don't have to do that. You can glue the whole panel down onto your card base. And now we have a nice little secretive pocket. 
How fun is that? I just love that option. I did not add magnets to this to keep the doors actually shut. I wasn't really worried about it. However, another way to use this panel would be to use a solid color cardstock, cut that out, add your magnets to the inside of the door panels, add another magnet on the back side of the gatefold, and then those will keep your doors shut. At that point, you would actually glue the whole piece all the way down. There are other ways to keep the doors shut, but I did want to mention that about the magnets, even though I didn't show it. Let's continue decorating the front of our panels. Since I printed out my patterned paper on this piece already, there's no need for me to add any decorative panels. And since this is a Halloween style design, what I've done is create a windows and door decor add-on and that will contain the files that I'm about to show you. And one of them is this fabulous glass window. I absolutely love it. I also created a set of curtains to go behind the glass windows. Now here you'll see that they have already been adhered to my glass window, but I unfortunately lost the footage to show you what they look like. So I'm just gonna add an image here so that you can see. What I did to adhere these is add my curtain to the back of the glass window. I kind of took note of where it comes down, right here, putting my thumb there, and then I added adhesive along the tracks of the glass. You don't need to do it all the way down it. And then just lined everything up, and you have your cute little window with curtains. In addition, I also created a back piece to go on the back side of the window. This way, if you want it to be a different color than the door panels, which you see like that, you would be able to cut out another piece. Let's say you want it to be yellow to show light coming through. Then you'll have that option. Now for my design, what I did was print and cut two of these using the digital Halloween collection. I am absolutely loving how this turned out. I did this because I wanted it to look as if you were looking through the glass window, seeing down the hall and all of the photos that they have on their wall. Just so much fun. To adhere those, you would just add your adhesive to the back of the curtain as well as to the frame of the glass window. And you really don't even have to do every little piece, just enough to get it to stick. And then just line these up. They layer really well. and give it a little burnish. So cute, I absolutely love this. Before we add our decorative pieces to the front, we want to go ahead and add our center decorative strips. Now this is an option, so you don't have to do it if you don't want to but I just like the extra color that it adds. So now we're ready to add our glass window to the front of our doors. I'm kind of going in maybe a fourth on each side and the top or three eighths of an inch. I really didn't measure it. Okay, now that we have our glass windows on, I'm going to use this little domino to kind of just hold them shut for a moment. I wanna talk about some more of the files in the windows and door decor add-on. 
For the bottom of the glass windows, I wanted to once again add some two layer panels for decoration. So you have the large panel and then you'll have a smaller panel that will just be glued on top. Now what I've done is gone ahead and glued those two pieces together. So this is what they look like. And that will be at the bottom. I love that. I love that I have the cobwebs here matching that of the curtains. Now another option is to use some flower and offsets that I created. I have a large and a small. When I first thought about this design, I was thinking that a flower would be kind of neat down here at the bottom. So if you wanna use the large one, you could put both of them here at the bottom. But after I saw the Halloween design along with the flower, I didn't think it went together, but I did want to actually show you how to use them. So this is one option. You could just use the flower on its own, or you could take the panel and add it on top. This large flower is about the same size as the smaller square in this two layer panel. That's a nice look as well. Another way that you can use these is to use the two layer panels and then use these smaller flowers and put those in the center of the smaller block. Again, I don't think it goes with the Halloween theme, but I do think it would look good with Christmas or spring or summer, things like that. So these are really nice pieces to have, just as another way to decorate the front of your door panels. Now, when I created these, you'll have one piece that's a flower, and then you have an offset. Upload those to your cutting software, and when you do, ungroup them. What I did for mine was again use the deboss tip to get the flower design etched into my foil cardstock. I really like that a lot. If you don't have the deboss tip, another option is you can change the cut on the flower to be draw, and you can draw that out on your cardstock. Now, before you go to cut it, you need to attach the offset to the flower and then cut it out. Let's say this is our offset and this is our flower. You need to attach those two so they become one and then it will deboss or draw and then it will cut out the flower, okay? Just wanted to point that out. It's a little tricky, but I think it makes a great little impact for decorating. I'm going to go ahead and add my two layer block down here at the bottom. I'm going to do the spacing as much as I can to mirror that at the top and line these up on the sides as well. Next, I created a different set of handles. So you have your doorknobs, which are round, you have your knockers, and now you have two sizes of handles. I created, again, a large and a small. Now, if you notice on here, there are four little lines, and you would upload to your software, ungroup, and then change those lines to be deboss or score, reattach, and then cut them out. I just love that addition of that little line. It does make it look, well, it could be a little dumbbell. <laughs> but if you ever look at the long door handles, um, you can see some definition between the back piece and the front. So that's why I included that. But here are our handles for the front. You can use these down here, which I thought looked really cute. Or you can use these on the sides. Now I didn't leave enough room here, so I'm gonna put mine down here. I really kind of like that look. You could have moved your windows and stuff over and then put your door handles here in the center. 
just to kind of give you an idea. Which that looks fine too. But I don't know, I like it down here. I wanted to use the large ones down here, but I didn't leave enough space between the window and my two layer panel. So for now, I'm just going to put these on there. Okay, so that's the front of my card decorated. I'm going to flip this over and now we're going to work on the back side. I'm using the side card panel. I again printed out the digital paper collection onto my cardstock just so that it was already prepped. I'm folding over on the half inch hinge here and burnishing. I'm going to add adhesive to the back side and then adhere this down to my base card. When I add this to my card, I'm going to put it between the stairs and the header. So I'm gonna kind of start down here at the stairs. I think it'll be easier. And then just line it up through the top. I'm gonna to also turn this over. I don't wanna make sure I don't get anything to go over. You don't wanna see it from the front. That looks good. And then burnish down. So see it's at the top of my stairs here and at the bottom of the header there. Okay, now that we have that down, what I did for the door base with the header and stairs is I cut that out again on patterned paper. And I'm going to now add this over top of where I just added the side card panel. This way it hides the hinge. Just make sure you're able to close your panel. So let's take a final look at the card. We have our front image here, it opens up. I added these two elements from the digital collection. You can actually tuck something underneath there if you wanted to, like a photo, add your sentiment and sign it here, or add a photo here, open up your card, you can add your sentiment here. You could even add some photos here on the side. It's a great way to send a greeting card with photos. You can even add more to the back side if you wanted to. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment. I would love to hear your feedback. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time, happy crafting.